Dear friends of homeopathy, dear homeopathic and medical doctors, we are in South Africa a few days after finishing of the first in South Africa Congress of the Liga Medicorum Homeopathica Internationalis. And we have very rare and very good possibility to ask you questions, well-known homeopathic physicians, and one of them is Professor Ashley Ross. Dr. Ashley Ross uh, is Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Health Science of Durban University of Technology. This faculty contains Department of Homeopathy, which exists actually only in South Africa. Yes, Ashley? Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, Ashley Ross was head of this uh, Department of Homeopathy during 10 years before. He also is a representative of uh, for homeopathy in Alice Health Profession Council of South Africa from 2006 to 16, and a representative for homeopathy on professional board for homeopathy, naturopathy, and phytotherapy under Alice Health Health Professions Council of South Africa. Ashley, I would like to start from the simplest question. How did you come to homeopathy? Why did you decide to become homeopathic doctor, not just medical one? Okay, um, originally I was a music student, even before. And um, I had uh, decided that I was going to be an artist and I was going to be performing music. And in the middle of that study, I um, developed a skin condition, which no one could treat. And I went to see everybody. I went to see general practitioners, dermatologists, and it just got worse and worse. And people had said to me, why don't you see a homeopath? And I, uh, I wasn't going to see a homeopath. And eventually, like most people, I had my back against the wall. And I thought I'm going to have to see a homeopath. And I went to see a homeopath in Cape Town. And she took my case and she decided at the end, she, I, she said, I'm going to give you Rustox. And I said, what is Rustox? And she said, it's poison ivy. And I said, why are you giving me poison ivy? And she said, well, if poison ivy can cause an itch, it can take it away. And I thought this was nonsense, of course. And five days later, my skin was not itching. And I thought, what sort of madness is this? And so I started reading about homeopathy and a year later I had a huge emotional breakdown and I was suicidal. And um, I was advised to see a psychotherapist and I thought, well, let me see the homeopath. And the homeopath prescribed remedies to me and um, not only did I stop being suicidal, but I performed at the most unbelievable level in exams just 10 days later and I thought there's nothing that I know in medicine that could get me from suicidal to be performing at this level in 10 days and I thought this was really what I had to do and so um, I finished the music degree and then the pursuit after that was was just homeopathy which really is a passion and um, when I reflect on it now I I realized why I really became a homeopath and that was that was because I had grown up with a mother with multiple sclerosis and she was in a bed paralyzed and so this little boy had watched his mother go from neurologist to neurologist to neurologist and this condition just getting worse and worse and I think now as, as, as a homeopath when I reflect on why am I a homeopath I actually think that that is what the driver was that I had seen the frustration of chronic disease of watching my mother die over a long time from chronic disease. And when I recognized homeopathy and I saw its effect, I recognized that here was a real potential to heal my mother. And so to some extent, my practice as a homeopath has been focused largely on chronic disease. Um, and I recognize that homeopathy really is the only system of medicine that I know that allows you to get into that level of, of disease and, and restoring health 
in patients. And obviously it's grown over time, but I think that's what it's really about. Thank you, Ashley. It's an amazing story and very persuasive. And another question, please. What is homeopathic's uh, unique contribution to medicine? Yeah, I, I, obviously in my studies, I've also looked at, at other systems of medicine and, and, and orthodox, the orthodox approach, allopathic approach to medicine is what we all know. And um, there are areas where allopathic medicine is really good. And that is really, uh, allopathic medicine is really good at saving lives, but not very good at sustaining lives. And I think, I on, think, on qualitative level. yeah, so I, I think, I think what homeopathy really has is a, well, it has a very broad philosophy and we'll talk about what homeopathy does to homeopaths later, I assume, but it has a very broad philosophy. It has a, a, a particularly inclusive and holistic perspective on man. And it has uh, quite a profound way of linking disease as a dramatization of an internal reality. And I think that, that for me as a homeopath has been the most profound experience of homeopathy is, is this understanding that although at a simple level, it is about identifying the remedy that the patient needs. When you really study the patient and the remedy, you start realizing that it's not just a here and now, what the patient needs, which is what attracted me initially, rust stops for an itchy skin. The realization that that disease over evolves over a lifetime, possibly even more than a lifetime, and homeopathy as a way of of working with all of that. That in some ways it's about what's immediately in front of you, but there are always antecedents, and it has the potential to bring this all into one big understanding. And so, the effect of the homeopathic remedy is absolutely profound at the level of the individual. And as we move forward and we start talking about individual medicine and personalized medicine and precision medicine, homeopathy has always been that. And what is beautiful in homeopathy is that we're not making it up as we go along. We have 200 years of tradition, of experience. We know how this works. Um, and we, can, we, we really can look at the man from whatever perspective we want to look at it. And there's a way of being able to pull it together from a philosophical or theoretical perspective. And there is an unchangeability in it as well, which I find personally very, very attractive. So it, it becomes a personal pursuit for me as a homeopath. My own understanding of what it means to be human, my own understanding of my patients, within this particular life experience. So it, it really is profound, I think. Thank you, Ashley. But you see, homeopathic physician has this experience. They are absolutely persuaded that homeopathy works and works deeply, widely, changing life of person and so on. More majority of homeopathic physician maybe do not know anything about this. They do not try to perceive what is there. What what you think? If if minds of allopathic doctors, other people would change, and if homeopathy becomes a part of health care in all the countries, what homeopathy can give to humanity in general? How ch can we change lives on this given homeopathic health care system? Uh, and it's a difficult question in some ways because it, it sort of suggests that homeopathy becomes a majority system of medicine and homeopathy, dream, homeopathy, homeopathy dream. becomes the first choice and personally I'm not sure if it would ever be like that because my understanding of the world is that the things that really have the power are never really at the top. Um, but what does homeopathy bring to humanity? I think if we had that idea I think the world is a, would be a very, very different place because homeopathy as a system is a system that increases awareness. It's a system that causes people to reflect. It's a system that causes people to take responsibility for people to engage in their own health and their own disease. And so I think if that were to be the mainstream understanding of the interaction between disease and health, 
then we would have a very different populace. And I also think that we would have um, perhaps less aggressive and combative societies okay. because our system of medicine has to talk to how we view the world. And um, if our view of the world is destroy, destroy, oppose, remove, cut it out, stop it, force it the other direction, it creates within societies the sense of being oppositional. And homeopathy is a very deeply respectful system of medicine. It says, however clever I might be as the physician, the only truth is really within the patient. And so my job as a physician is not to impose my will on the patient. My job as a physician is to receive the patient and to try to understand and then to act as some sort of facilitating agent. But it is a deeply respecting system. Um, and I think if that were the attitude that society, humanity were to adopt in their understanding of disease, we would end up with a society that was that much more sensitive, listening, trying to understand, and less oppositional. So I, I, I think there are lessons that get learned in the homeopathy. We've just come back from a conference. And when you, when you sit with a community of homeopaths, whatever their background is originally, this aspect of homeopathy comes through. There is a, there is a, a calmness, a steadiness, a systematic approach, a listening, a trying to understand that you find within that community. And that's just because the discipline actually develops that capacity within humans. And not just because we're homeopaths. So I think patients would also, my experience of patients as, as homeopathic patients is that they do develop these sorts of capacities, they become reflective, they become aware, they take responsibility, they want to understand what is going on. And I think that's quite profound also. Right. And do you have your personal insights into homeopathy? Well, I came into homeopathy through music. And one of the one of the questions I got asked repeatedly when I moved from what was going to be a very successful career as a musician into homeopathy, people would say to me, now, how do you move from music to homeopathy? And eventually my answer became, there is no movement from music to homeopathy, but the same thing. And so my understanding of homeopathy is fundamentally musical. And so I realized that my own interest, if we go back to my mother's multiple sclerosis, my own interest in music was really that as a young child, I realized that music had the capacity to meet a patient or a listener where they are and to be able to transport, transport them to a place where everything is fine. And so to some extent, my understanding of, of homeopathy is that homeopathy is you using words, but ultimately you are trying to find your patient's music. And so you listen to their song and you match it with their music. And it is a way to be able to transport someone not for 20 minutes or for 30 minutes, but you can transport them for a lifetime. And so that's what it is. You listen, you understand, you hear their song, you understand their music, and you say, what else plays this music? And you put their music in front of them, like some sort of mirror, and the song changes. I'm going to develop this. It's an amazing thought, actually. I've done it with some composers of looking at their biographies and their music. I'll tell you, I'll, tell, I'll give you an example. When I was in that suicidal state, I used to sit at the piano until midnight, after midnight, my poor parents, and I would play Brahms, I would play Brahms, I would play Brahms, I would play Brahms. And it was a big love disappointment. It was an idealized love. I was young, I'd fallen in love with this woman. I was going to marry her, we were going to have children, and life was going to be great. And I just played Brahms all the time. When I went to see the homeopath in that state, she gave me natural muriatic acid. And when you go into Brahms's biography, his relationship with Clara Schumann, she was married to his mentor, he put her on a pedestal. Schumann commits suicide. He's now able to pursue this woman. He can't pursue her because in pursuing her, if they ever consummated that relationship, she would fall from the pedestal. 
So he consorts with prostitutes rather than uh, pursuing the woman of his dreams. So this was something like my story, the story of the unattainable, unrequited love. So what was happening? Brahms was living that experience and he created the music. I was in the experience, I wanted the music. It was a remedy, but it wasn't a remedy that could hold me. After Muriat and connects the two, it's the remedy that worked. It's a fine connection, you observe. And Ashley, I came here to visit your faculty of health science. I wish to be witness, to witness <laughs> that it works, that it gives education. May you please uh, tell a few words how is going um, how proceeds education in the uh, homeopathic faculty, in the department of homeopathy? Okay, um, in the training of medical homeopaths in South Africa is different to anywhere else in the world. The closest comparison is India. And it comes a little bit out of the history of homeopathic education in South Africa. And we, back in the 60s and 70s, 1960s and 70s, we had a training for homeopaths, which was a lot like the professional training for homeopaths elsewhere in the world, like in the UK. And um, you had a whole system of colleges. They were training lay people in homeopathy. And in 1978, there was a closing of all of these colleges. And the objection to these colleges was that they were not medical. They were not accountable. And so homeopathic education in South Africa became illegal. You were not allowed to teach anyone. Um, and so the, the real stumbling point, point was about medical accountability and diagnostic skill. And so what the homeopathic community at that point did was they went to the medical school and they said, let's model the homeopathic education on medical education. And so they essentially imported the medical education, realized that surgery was not going to be a huge component of the homeopathic practice. And so they removed components of the medical curriculum and they put in components of the homeopathic curriculum. And so that, that program was frustrating in some ways because people were wanting to be homeopaths, but they were having to be trained as doctors. So they were, they were dissecting cadavers for two years. They were doing physiology, pathology, microbiology, so biochemistry, everything, all everything of those subjects that the medical in. students would do. And in that original program, they only ran into homeopathy in their third year. They had one materia medica subject and then they had diagnostics taught by medical doctors going into hospitals, doing ward rounds, all of those sorts of things. And the homeopathy became more and more in the fourth and the fifth year, etc. So that program was started in 1989. And in 2014, what is it, 2020, no, 2015, we developed a new version of the program because now we had been doing it for quite a long time, 20 something years, um, we made the program more streamlined so that uh, we could introduce Materia Medica in the first year. But essentially what, what happens in the South Afri African education is that people are taught as primary contact practitioners. They learn pharmacology, they do all of those sorts of things, but the focus is really on, on, on a homeopath. And I, I think that's a really useful thing in our curriculum because what we found in the old curriculum was that people were so um, trained in the orthodox paradigm that when they ran into Materia Medica in their third year, they couldn't deal with it. And it took a year and a half for them to get their head oh. around some of the concepts. And because you were essentially producing medical doctors who used homeopathy mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm homeopaths conceptually and so um, the curriculum has been streamlined and changed um, to to produce um, practitioners who happily refer to specialists they send for blood tests they send for x-rays they they can explain homeopathy in in very orthodox sorts of terms and the other component because it's a master's degree they do research um, a, a master's thesis and so that creates a particular our students every single one of them has to do 
so it creates a particular way of, of approaching things which is quite scientific and accountable. Um, and um, I think in that way, somewhat different to the Indian education, which is a bit less, um, from, a, from a sort of overtly Western perspective, less um, rigorous. Thank you very much, Ashley. I hope that uh, your experience, experience of your faculty will be spread over the world. And one day, our homeopathic dream will come true. I think so. Okay. Lovely. Thank you.